Hi, <laughs> I'm here. Sorry, I wanted to shut the door. Just want to get everything set. So this almost didn't happen today. I had planned to do this live. Welcome. It's the Reseller Mom Show. I'm Rebecca. Thank you for joining me. For anybody that's going to watch this later, right now I'm live. We're going to do um, an unboxing slash mini haul of all the items that I got in one of my thread up rescue boxes and I'll show the things that I've decided to keep. So I went on a rampage for online sourcing and I bought um, one 50 item rescue box of mixed clothing, one size, I forget which size. Another 50 item of mixed clothing, but all one size, I forget which size. What I'm gonna show you today is the things that I've decided to keep from a rescue box of the 200 item mixed size mixed clothing. So it was like a giant mishmash. It came in three boxes. I went through it the other day, posted on Instagram the entire mountain of clothing that I had to go through. Hey there. Thank you. That is one of my boutique items. So I have a couple left. I'm not sure which size is. And it was one that I just had the stock photos up. And then when I got Sandy the steamer, shout out to Sandy back there, I steamed it. And now I have to take like some actual pictures of it. So I have a few of them back there that need to get done. Anyway, welcome. Thank you. It's good to see you. Um, so I am going to do like a couple items from the hall and then maybe do some questions and then a couple items from the hall and do some questions and see how that goes as a format. Again, haven't ever done this before. It's only my second live. So we'll see how that goes. And I wasn't sure if anybody was going to even show up. So if there are no questions in the chat, I do have a few that are um, from Instagram or from prior YouTube videos. And technically I've already answered these to other people, but I thought I've never really put them in a, a video format. So maybe then they would be helpful to other people um, when they watch this later. So I'll do some things from the hall here. Okay. So let's see, I got all sorts of sizes up one and I this is my second 200 item thread up red box that I did and the first one I wasn't super pleased with and I thought let me just try it one more time and kind of see and while I did get some good things I do think that that will be the last time I purchase a 200 item mixed size mixed clothing um I got a bunch of extra small I'm so used to looking at my tripod over here so I've got a bunch of extra small various brand athletic wear so I think I may actually keep these and bundle them up and do like an extra small athletic wear box so this one happens to be athleta um you know which could stand on its own and I do have a few athleta pieces that are extra small I'm trying to find if I could do them all at once they may be mixed in here, so I may just have to go with it. Um, this is Seven for All Mankind, the high waist skinny. So, and this is a size 25. I do think that I got another Seven for All Mankind, also the same exact one. So I may lot these together because it is a small size and I don't usually have that good of luck with that smallest size so that may be a lot up sort of a thing this i thought was nice this was a towel that's new with tag size 10 petite retail for 79.50 denim button front skirt so i think that will be a nice piece i mean obviously i try to stick with the towel bits in the larger sizes so i'm not sure about 10 if that would work or not as a larger size i don't think that's too large of a size um so we'll see how that goes Black stuff is so hard. I know. I know. Well, I have the two, um, you know, daylight diffuser bulb lights here. ESSDI, I think is the brand. And I found that with the iPhone, when I'm photographing, if I hold it like an extra second or two, it does actually brighten up enough where you can see the detail on a black item. I take a few different angles. I do have the window over here. And then anything that I don't capture with it as I'm taking the shot, I just hope for the best in editing later. And so I do find that I'm editing a lot of black items. This, oh, see, it did have, see, I see this tag before. Okay, this is even better then. Caslon. I'm not really used to showing it on the computer. Um, so this will be nice, actually. I thought this was, I was like, oh, this is a really nice piece, but I didn't see any tag, but it's like stuffed on this. So does that mean that that's the back? 
That can't be right. Is this the front? And then this is the back. That's where the tag is. That's kind of random. So the buttons in the back with the V-neck. Interesting. I'll have to look that up. But it's really, really pretty. And so I'm not going to do how much I'm going to list these things for because I honestly didn't do any comps, didn't check anything out. All I did was sort yesterday. So um, I hope I even remember why I decided to put these things in this um, pile. This is Zanana Outfitters and it's a size large kind of hooded utility vest, but it's like a tunic or a dress sort of a thing. So I think this will be great for people's travel. It's got all kinds of pockets and zippers. So I think that will be nice. So this is a Victoria's Secret VSX and these are extra small. So these are going to probably go again in this. Actually, I'm going to keep these all separate. Um, in this extra small athletic box that I'm going to do or bundle because I don't know that I'm going to be able to sell those otherwise. So we'll, we'll give that a try. I've never done it before, so we'll see. This, I wasn't sure. And this is also definitely going to list online slash not sure. Need to research it. Have no idea what it is. Think it might be something slash slash pile. <laughs> um, so this is Jolie Los Angeles. So I don't know if this has anything to do with Miss Angelina. Like I don't know if she has a line. I don't know if it has something like I have no idea. But it's really pretty floral spaghetti strap, and it is a romper or a dress. No, it's a dress with a little ruffle at the end. So I wouldn't say that it's anything particularly high quality, like fabric wise, but it's pretty and. You never know. I'll look it up and see. If anyone knows, go ahead and put it in the chat. Hi, hi, hi. Bunch of people. Thank you so much. You enjoy my videos. What kind of box did you get? So um, I'll say it a couple of times for those of that are, I just jumped into it. I don't like doing the whole like, let's wait around and just kind of fart around um, that people do at the beginning of videos. Because I always think about the person that watches it later and they're just like, blah, blah, blah. This is not for me. So I got a 200 item mixed clothing mixed size box from thread up that's what this is all from this is cyrus and again i wasn't sure on this it's a size large just a nice button front sweater gray it's nice and soft i don't think it's cashmere or anything i think i already looked yeah rayon and nylon but it's nice so i'll look up that tag again cyrus i'm not sure if that's anything if anyone knows let me know this is Puma. Oh, no, this is not Puma. This is uh, Slazinger. Okay, I definitely thought it was Puma. I saw the, the animal <laughs> and I thought it was Puma at quick because I was trying to sort through this really quickly. Um, I, I don't think this brand goes for very well. It's a golf polo, obviously, for women. And I, it's an extra small. Maybe I'll put it in that athletic because I don't think that that will go. I've looked that brand up before and I didn't think it was anything. This is Moth. So your anthropology, size medium, kind of nice. A little tear at the bottom. So we'll see how that goes. So is garage something? Because I thought it was, but again, I have not done any research. I have two items from garage and I thought that it was something, but again, that happens to me often where I think something and then it's not. So I have two large sleeveless bodysuits. This one's a blank, a uh, black kind of ribbed one. And then this one is like a camo lace up in the front one. So I'm going to look these up. They're both size large. So those may go in a lot. This is Maurice's and it's just a denim skirt. The size on it though is a nine ten. So obviously you know, Maurice's for a plus size is good, but I don't know about a Maurice's for a, a 910. But summertime, people like their denim skirts. Nice mini. Okay, here come all the extra small leggings. These are all like, this is 90 degree by Reflex. This is CNC California. Or a couple of these. So again, I mean, on Poshmark, I could definitely get a nice little bundle going with all of that. This was a weird one. So it's it's got to be a like a swimsuit cover up. I didn't play with it totally to figure out how it goes, but here we go. So surplus. And the reason why I say it's a bathing suit cover up is because it says magic suit on it. 
Now, at first I thought Miracle Suit, so I'm not sure. I know Miracle Suit is good. I don't know about Magic Suit, um, size large, black. So I think that will be good timing, and I can put this on. Shout out to Amy over here. Put that on her, and that will look nice. This is Active Life Large, just like a sweater. And honestly, I may just keep this for myself. There are a few things that I put in this pile that will probably just stick with me unless for some reason they're anything special. It's got the zippers at the bottom, but I just think this would be really cute. Looks like a faux wrap across the front. Yeah. Yes. Correct. Sorry. It's kind of, it's really actually hard to see. Sorry about that. I think this is an okay setup for lives, but I'm not really sure. I'll do a few more and then I'm going to go over some of the questions. So if you have any questions, go ahead and put them down and it could be on anything. Again, I just, it's cool to start the conversation with you guys of some of the people that have been watching um, the videos that I've put up. So I feel like it's a fun time to do this. This says, excuse me, I have to go be awesome from double zero size large. I don't know if that's something I won't be keeping this, even though it is a size large, but it's got... Again, just kind of this open. I don't know, is that a faux wrap also? I'll have to look that up. I don't think I've had anything with that type of detail. Um, LuLaRoe, and this is just an open front, lightweight sweater cardigan thing, but there's two of them. So it's a size three. Do they? I don't know what that means, size three. It can't be a three X because it's not big enough. So I've not ever come across a LuLaRoe item that has that type of, is it a three like a juniors? Is that what it is? There's two of these somewhere. There's another one, a different print. I sold a LuLaRoe exactly like that in less than a, oh, good. Okay, do you know what the name of it is? <laughs> because I, ne I never look up the names of things. So at least for LuLaRoe, I need to try to do that. All right, this is the last one and then I'll, see what I've got over here. So this is treasure and bond pair of jeans. Um, skinny. I, this is what that looks like. I have not looked this up. I'm not familiar treasure and bond. I just thought the label was cool. So I thought it would be worth checking out. So it's a mini boot cut size 28. They're pretty they look, they look nice. So I don't know. We'll have to check that out. Okay, so let's go over a couple things here. Nope, that's notes from something else. Let me do like this. Pop them on my phone. So I had a couple people in YouTube comments and then on Instagram ask for me to do a video about how to start a reselling channel. And it's funny because I've actually been thinking about doing it, not because I'm an expert. Hello, I have three people on my live, though I'm very happy that you're here. <laughs> and I only have like 200 something subscribers. Um, I, no expert, but what I do regret in this whole process of like documenting what you're doing is not starting a reselling channel earlier so that I could really document my reselling journey from the beginning. I kind of regret that. Like I'd always wanted to, but never did, didn't have the time. And I really didn't have the time and I probably shouldn't have. But looking back now, I'm like, it would have been really cool to just see all the stuff that comes so easy now. And again, I'm no expert, but what it was like then when I started. So I'm thinking that if I can, you know, do some documenting on a meta level about reselling, that would be cool. You know, the fact that I only have about 200 subscribers, the fact that some of my videos only have like not even 300 views yet, um, I think would be really cool because hopefully by the end of the year, I will well have passed all of those stats and it would be nice to look back and kind of see where I am. So um, there's also some interesting things that I am learning and I think it would be good to share. So I will probably have a video coming out about that soon. I've got a long list of topics. I'll take all the suggestions you have for topics. Um, it's just, I can sometimes record faster than I can actually like put them up. Sometimes I can record them faster than I can edit them. It just, I kind of backlog myself. So just be patient with me when I say I have a video coming out. I do, but it may take a while. <laughs> um, 
how does the photographer and I, how do the photographer and I share photos? So this was a question. Oh, thank you so much. Shirley Kimono. Excellent. Yes. Actually, I'm going to write that down right now because I don't know. Does the chat go away? And I don't want to lose it. I feel like people have said that the chat goes away. Thank you. Um, thrift to flip. So how does the photographer share photos with me? So if any of you have someone that takes photos with you, maybe this isn't going to apply, but if you are someone that is interested in having someone take photos for you or do some prep work for you, I've been working with someone for about, oh, thank you, Anna. The chat stays awesome. Okay. Um, I have been working with someone for about two years. I did put up a video with as many details as I could provide and think of and make sense of to give someone, you know, all the nitty gritty of what I'd like to share about having a photographer. But I do have a woman who is local and she picks up the items, preps them, takes the photos of them, fills out a form, that form and the photos go electronically. Thank you. Um, to my virtual assistant in the Philippines. And so, and she handles the listing from there. So how do we share the photos? We use Google photos and I wish that I could find a better way. It definitely does the trick and we've definitely changed it a few times, but there's got to probably be a better way to streamline it. I just haven't figured it out yet, but my photographer will take the photos on her phone. She has an Android. She's downloaded Google photos. All those photos will go into her Google photos you know, back up and then she will create a folder from those photos from that batch and share that folder with me. And now I've actually had her share that photo of uh, that photo folder, not only with me, but with my photographers, um, with my virtual assistant as well at the same time. That way I'm not backlogging the process. So it gets shared to both of us at the same time. We can both access it. The newest change is that I'm going through that folder and just making a quick little Excel sheet, um, like with the item number and the price, and I'm just pricing everything in one foul swoop, reviewing the photos and pricing everything down the line, and I'm sending that um, Google Sheet to my virtual assistant as well. Now, I'm not the bottleneck of reviewing drafts and letting them go live. Everything is being done by the virtual assistant. So she now has the photos, the form filled out with all the information of this, describing the item, and the pricing from me. So all of that will just, she just makes the listings and they just go up. And so before she used to make the draft and then I would have to go through and review it and price it. And that was very time consuming, even though I'm not doing the actual work of the listing, it was still time consuming to open everything up, check it through, add the pricing and set it live. And so this has really helped me out on a daily basis. I do it now once on a Sunday usually and in the evening, price everything. It takes me like 20 minutes to go through them all and price it. And then the listings just happen all week long, which is amazing. Um, here, do you list more than 70 items a week and just do the rest of the work yourself or do you just list 70 a week? So, well, <laughs> it depends and it's changed. So, and, and it, and it will probably continue to change. So right now, most weeks, I give 70 items to the photographer for her to do. And then those go to the virtual assistant for listing. And so 70 items I buy and I ship and that's all I do with them. And that's pretty static. Sometimes we skip a week if I had trouble getting sourcing done and I am light on items, then I will ask the photographer or if the photographer has a backup where she's going out of town or she's got family in town or whatever and she needs a week off, then we'll basically delay it a week. So then it might be like 70 items every other week for a short period of time. So that just happened like this past two weeks. So she took a load, skipped a week, then took a load. Um, when that happens, then I'm on point where I won't have any work for the virtual assistant. I won't have any listings if I don't get my button gear. So then at that point, at the very minimum, I'm taking five photos a day, of, you know, five items photographed a day. I put the draft up in Poshmark. And then, or not the draft, I put the listing up in Poshmark from my photos and then the virtual assistant will cross post that to eBay and to Mercari. And so at least she has some work. I have some listings going up at the very minimum five listings a day. So it can be anywhere from 10 from the photographer plus my five if we're all firing on all cylinders. So 15 a day down to five a day. 
Sometimes it's been where I was doing 10 a day. And so it was up to 20 a day where it was 10 from her and 10 from me. So it can range. Ideally, I'd like to be at 10 from her and 10 from me every single day, all the time. And once we've ironed out that process to where it's happening all the time, I can source enough to support that for her, for me, keep everybody working at capacity, then I can move on from there. But since I haven't been able to consistently hit that 20 per day with her at full capacity as the photographer and me at full capacity doing my own listings, I've yet to ever try to move on <laughs> past 20. Um, and I go back and forth, forth with it. Like I struggle with it. Like, should I, should I be doing more of this work to save on the money or should I be doing more work, but other things and have less listings go up but she's doing that work so that I can be working on the business and not in the business. So uh, I go, I, I would like to say I'm strong as an Oak, but I'm kind of like flip floppy, like a willow a lot of times <laughs> in my business practices. I just always feel like there's a better way and I haven't figured it out yet. And so I get, you know, FOMO or whatever thing. And, and so I change processes too quickly. So, um, that's hopefully that answers your question. Let me know if it doesn't, I can definitely elaborate more. Um, you're welcome. So let's see, here's another one. Then I'll go back to some items. Um, is cross posting on eBay worth it? And then I'm also adding on Mercari. So here's my thoughts on, on cross posting. I was primarily on Poshmark. And then my sister who resells as well, she and I joined forces and that's when I went on eBay. So for a while we were actually working together and we were splitting the, the profits and everything. Um, and then we ended up separating and just doing our own thing because she has a job full time. I have a kid full time. <laughs> so we decided it was better to pursue our reselling in a separate way. Um, but when we got together, that's where I got my taste of eBay. And so during that time, we were putting all items on Poshmark and all items on eBay. So everything was cross posted and that was not being done by a virtual assistant. It was the work of the two of us. And so I got used to those sales and how eBay worked. And so it seemed less scary because she primarily spearheaded eBay and I primarily spearheaded Poshmark. And so we were able to work together and divide and conquer. And it seemed less scary that way. Um, when we split and she did her own thing, I kept the eBay account and just kind of did it as best as I could myself. That's when I started having the virtual assistant cross post for me. So I always have really basically had all items on Poshmark and eBay. And as a result of that, people ask me like, what percentage of your sales are on eBay? What percentage of your sales are on Poshmark? Pretty much every month they're dead even neck and neck. One month, it may be a couple hundred more on one. One month, it may be a couple hundred more on the other. But honest to God, they're always even. And it continues to surprise me which ones are going to, you know, which items will sell on eBay and which items will sell on Poshmark. So to me, I just can't get rid of eBay, even though it's such a pain in my neck. So I would love to just be a Poshmark seller, but I, it's just not in the cards for me. And because I still have a lot of items that I pick up that, it, you know, eBay does allow me to get rid of them in a certain way. And Poshmark does allow, you know, I can do different sales on Poshmark. I can do different things on eBay to get things to sell. And now I've added Mercari in the mix. Um, and I've been having great sales on Mercari for just getting it rolling. Um, I feel like your buyer can be anywhere. And if you want that buyer, <laughs> you want that item sold, you need to be everywhere as best as you can for as much as you can handle. And so because I'm not doing that cross posting, because there's no way in blue blazes, I'd be able to do it myself. So because I have the help of a virtual assistant and because it is still financially profitable to have her do it based on the sales that I'm making, I'm going to stick with all three for now. I'm not going to take on any other platforms. I don't want to know about any other platforms. La, 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 no more platforms, <laughs> but, um, I feel like the operation is going well with Poshmark, eBay, Mercari. I don't know that Mercari will ever inch up to the level that Poshmark and eBay are, but when you get multiple consistent daily sales from Poshmark and eBay, and then the Mercari ones are just kind of icing on the cake, I think it's great. And because I have, and I'm dabbling more into boutique items, like you see back there where I'm buying them wholesale, 
um, and having, you know, doing the work once and it's a multiple, my hair is crazy, um, multiple listings out of it, you know, that can sell over and over again. It's great to have them in multiple places because then you're opening it up even further to get those items to sell more quickly. When it's a one-off, it's like, well, it could sell over here, but maybe if I had it sell, you know, and stay consistent on the other platform, it would have sold over there eventually. You don't know. But with the multiples, it's great. Um, same for liquidation and wholesale. My Macy's wholesale liquidation, that has been selling on all platforms. I've had great Poshmark sales with it, great eBay sales with it, and great Mercari sales with it. Um, probably the best on eBay, and that's fine, but I've had good sales on all three platforms with that liquidation lot. So I think that that is a good, a good thing as well. So if you can handle more, do it, but don't spread yourself too thin until you have solid systems in place for each one. So the long and the short of that is, yes, I think it's worth it if you do it slow and steady and work your way up to it. Let's see what's going on over here. Um, unrelated question, where in Orlando are you? Do you like it? I'm in South Florida and wanted to make a transition to Orlando in the future. So I'm, I'm new to YouTube bill and land. And so I'm not gonna say where in Orlando I am. If you want to get with me separately, um, DM me on Instagram and we can always have a chat, but I don't know, I feel weird about saying that. Um, but I do love Orlando. I'm from New Jersey, so you know, anywhere that's closer to the equator is a good thing. I'm always cold. <laughs> so, um, you know, for me, like I just kept heading South. I went to school in DC when my husband was in the military, we lived in North Carolina and then he, you know, had ties here in Orlando. So we ended up in Orlando. He had lived in South Florida before and I don't think was a fan of it. Um, so I don't know that we would ever head down that way, but Orlando's awesome. If you can deal with being landlocked, you know, it is kind of a bummer not to be able to, you know, do the beach thing when you are in Florida and you kind of think of beach and stuff like that. Um, at least I did from being a person that, um, you know, didn't live here, but I like it. We're 45 minutes away from Cocoa Beach. So you can always head out that way. You can head to the West Coast, to Tampa and Clearwater and all of that. So I like it. Um, we're Disney people. Like I think Geo by the time he was like three and a half months old, had been to all four theme parks. So we're Disney people. He's a Disney baby. I think it would be really sad if we still lived in Florida, but we but weren't here and couldn't go to Disney as regularly as we do. So, but that's not everybody's thing. I mean, I'm sure there's tons of people in Orlando that never go to Disney, but that is not us. We are born and bred Disney family. So um, it's cool. And I would definitely, you know, come up, check it out. And you know, I can show you the bins up here <laughs> and, you know, give it a try. It just depends on what you like about being in South Florida and what you don't versus the pluses and minuses of Orlando. But hit me up on Instagram and we can always chat more. Um, how many, how many return per week do you get? So, oh, returns. Okay. <laughs> so I, did I put up either I have a post going up today or I already put it. Oh, I did put it. Um, it was like my big laundry bin of returns. That I so a return would come in and I would shove it in a drawer in my guest room and then not look at it ever again. And like I had good stuff coming back to me, things that were new with tags, and they just were sitting in drawers because I just I didn't have a process, I didn't have a system, and I didn't know what to do with them. And the more and more they stacked up, because I said, Oh, I'll deal with them later once I set up a process, the more and more stacked up, the more scary it got. So I am going to do a video probably on what I just went through with that big giant bin. I have the numbers somewhere of like how many I actually processed and what my process is and what I would recommend and what my do's and don'ts would be for the future. So be on the lookout for that. I haven't recorded it yet, so it's probably going to be a couple of weeks. But to let you know, I wouldn't say that I have any regular number on a weekly basis. I would say it totally depends. I would say on average, if you average them out, and I have not actually done the numbers, um, maybe one to two a week, if that. I feel like they come in droves, and I don't know why that would be, but um, I have a UPS box, and they all go there, and so sometimes I feel like I'll get the email from the UPS store that's like, come and get your package, come and get your package, like three in a day, and then other times I you know, won't go there at all to pick up any packages, so... It does depend. I would say on average, just going off the top of my head, one to two a day, uh, a week, one to two a week. I have free returns. I have 
free first class shipping on eBay and then paid for for priority and padded flat rate. So when I do the free returns, um, you know, I'm paying the both way shipping on a portion of that, depending on how the, the item return is set up with them. Um, I do feel like having the free returns is probably saving me for some item not as described cases that you'll get because they don't want to pay for the shipping. And so I have not really done the numbers or the analysis yet to, because that was new as of 2019 for me, free shipping, free returns, all that was new for me this year. So I don't have any analysis yet on if that's what I'm going to do going forward, if it's better one way or not. I just haven't had time to do that. But I will say, I don't think in general, it's being so abused in any way to where I'm like, oh my God, this is awful. I just hate dealing with them. I hate, I hate getting them. I hate when people are fishing for a refund, but they don't want to return the item. Like I just hate all of that customer service that's related to eBay returns, unhappy people, things like that. Um, it just, it's time consuming. It drags me down in my day and it's just a total bummer all around. <laughs> so, and I'm also just, you know, I want to keep my account in good standing. And so a lot of that just kind of freaks me out because I'm always like, ah, like I just want to do the right thing and make everybody happy. So um, I would say on average off the top of my head, one to two eBay returns a week, which, I, you know, it's going to be part of the biz. So like, I'm okay with that. Um, it's a bummer when it's a high value item. I had a couple over $40 sales come back to me just recently. But since I did the big process the other day, they are back up and listed again. So they can sell again. They were new with tags. They were still new with tags when I got them back. I checked everything over. So, you know, I can make money again with them and it is what it is. So hopefully that helps. Gotta go from thrift to thrift. You're welcome. Thank you. Check you later. Anna, thank you. This is why I have been afraid of eBay. So yeah, I mean, there's a lot of reasons to be afraid of eBay. For I gotta keep an eye on the time because I'll have to pick up Geo soon. Um, there's a lot of reasons to be afraid of eBay, but you can't be unafraid of eBay until you do it. <laughs> like, because I was afraid of eBay too. I'm not still afraid of eBay, but I'm still anxious about eBay. I guess I would say. So I went from being afraid to being anxious. I mean, as far as like doing it on a daily basis when everything's running normal it's fine and no big deal anymore. So what used to make me crazy and scared now doesn't. Um, it's when things go awry <laughs> that is problematic. So when you have somebody message you that says, you know, something's wrong with the item and then you tell them to do a return and they don't want to do it. I always go back and forth on, should I tell them to do a return and deal with it that way? And maybe that will prevent nuisance claims or should I just cut my losses, give them a partial refund and call it a day and let them keep the, I mean, I think I'm going to start doing more of that, but I, my gut is always like, no, I'm going to get this sucker. Like if they're trying to scam me, I'm going to make them go through all the hoops, um, to prevent that. Or if I'm going to end up with a negative feedback anyway, then, you know, this is what I'm going to do. So I haven't figured out, a. uh, always make them return. Okay. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's what I've been doing. Um, every once in a while, there'll be a really low value item that I'm just like, how's a $4 or $5 refund, um, which would be a portion, but I know they played too many games. And, that, and that's the thing. I feel like with Poshmark, I don't have any of that worry or any of that anxiety, or those things aren't even of a concern for me because Poshmark steps in and handles and arbitrates that claim. And I don't always respond to return cases or, or open cases. And I put all my measurements in and my pictures are always good. And so I really always feel mostly protected in a Poshmark scenario. In an eBay scenario, I don't feel that way. And I feel like it's more loosey goosey and I hate calling eBay and dealing with that. And so there's just, and I feel like there's more scam on there as well. And so it's not my favorite thing to deal with, but in general, I'm not at the point where I can just say goodbye to eBay. You know, I just can't, I tried for about two or three months last year at the end of the, at the end of the year to phase out eBay and said, I was just going to do Poshmark. And I took a big hit, you know, and I don't want to take a big hit. I only want to go 
through the roof with my sales. So um, this is why I love Poshmark. Yep, Poshmark protects their sellers more than eBay for sure. Yeah, I mean, I feel like a lot of people feel that way. So um, yeah, I don't think I have anything else more to say on that because it's just like, you know, they handle it differently. They do, they do it differently. They both have different philosophies on what is going to get them better in the long run. I think Poshmark thinking they're protecting their sellers is going to, in the long run, help the business overall. And I think that's right. eBay has a different philosophy, but eBay's also been around a lot longer. And so maybe they know something else over the long term. You never know. True. That's why I only list shoes like dance go. I'm scared of returns after many days. Yeah. I think I have 30 day free returns. I don't think I'll ever change it from now. Oh my God, my knees. Ah, like a 900 year old person. Um, so let's do a couple more from here. If you have more questions or want to say more things, put them in, but I feel like, you know, I want to be able to do both. Um, as promised. So I don't know what this is. This is wild fable. So I kept it out to look it up. I am not familiar. It's just a size large flannel shirt. It seems not large for a size large, but I feel like lately I feel like everything is not large <laughs> to be a large. Now that I'm large, I'm like, oh, that looks so small. So um, I have to look that up. This is ideology size large. It's just a nice athletic jacket. And I've sold a couple pieces. They must have, I don't know, I don't know much about this brand, but the only time I've ever gotten ideology pieces has been in a thread up rescue box. And they have sold um, in the plus sizes. This, I think I said was large, so not a plus size, but it's pretty. So, I mean, I won't get a lot for it, but it's got the thumb holes and everything. I have so many of these, I don't need to keep it for myself. I was thinking about it, <laughs> but I don't think I'm going to. So this is just a Massimo halter bikini bathing suit, um, size large, both pieces match, which is great. So I won't get a lot for it, but because it's bathing suit season, I will put that up. I thought that was good. Express Portofino shirt, slim fit, extra small. So it's a pretty print. It's a little busy for me. Um, but I've heard good things about the Portofino shirt. I don't know that I've ever actually found or sold one, um, but I've heard that of the express things, this is the more well-known and, you know, things that would sell. So I'm just putting things in piles now. Um, Target brand. What? Oh, Wild Fable. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for clarifying. They do? Okay, good. All right. I'll try that. Yeah. I, and I don't, go to Target very often. So that's why I'm less familiar with Target brands. This was another one. I wasn't sure if it was something socialite, size large, just a basic top. It's nice and soft. So we'll see. I'll look it up and check it out unless you have something to say, which will save me some time. Thank you. Um, tech gear size large. So this is just from Kohl's and I'll probably just keep this for myself. So here's, is it this one and this one? Where is it? Oh, here's the other seven for all mankind. Then I was going to show you the thing. So this is the same, the high waist ankle skinny. These are nice dark wash blue. So, oh, that's what I have to check the size. 24. Damn it. That's not going to work. Foiled my plan. So anyway, we'll put those up anyway. Um, Driftwood. Yes. Right. This is the thing. I feel like I've heard it on a haul video but I don't remember who, and I haven't looked it up yet, but there's two pair in here. I mean, it doesn't look like anything special, but I thought that Driftwood was a good thing. Jody Driftwood, size 28. That's all we say. I don't know. Maybe I'm making it up. Maybe it's a different kind of wood or a different kind of drift. Sometimes I put things together in my head because I'm only half listening a lot of times. But at first look, they're in good condition. It's a nice, cool, like light gray wash. So there's that, and then there's another one of them in here. Um, MPG, extra small, so that's going to go in that box. 90 degree, extra small, that's going to go in the box too. So that would probably end up with like a good 10 items, which I think will be pretty cool. Um, Maurice's size small. So again, I haven't totally decided on this. I may put this in the consignment store pile. Um, so if I didn't say... When I sorted the 200 items, I dumped them all out, made a big giant pile in my living room. Um, and then I sorted them. Well, I'll take to the consignment store and try to sell back for some kind of profit. 
slash break even slash lose a little bit, but I'm getting rid of it and I don't want to list it online, but it's still a brand and still sellable. Then there's a garage sale pile because I'm thinking I want to try to do regular like pop-up garage sales um, to just clearance out merchandise in a quick way where I can just keep things in bins and then just pull out the bins and people can just buy things for a dollar and I just get rid of them because I've been and my clearance video is coming soon. I've recorded parts of it, but I'm still firming up some other parts. I want it to be good. <laughs> so, um, selling on Facebook in lots is really kind of getting my goat these days. And I just, there's just too many people that say I'm coming and I go through the whole process of putting everything out and then they don't come. And so I'm just kind of over that right now. Maybe I'll go back to it later, but, um, and then this is the pile to actually sell online. So Maurice is size small. I don't think I'm going to sell this online. I think I'm going to put this in the consignment store pile. We'll keep that out. I saw something happen. What kind of boxes did you get? I got two 200 item mixed clothing, mixed size. And then that's the second one I've done and I'm not doing it again. Putting it on record. Macari is great. Fun. Yeah, I've heard that. I've never really put up a lot and I've never bought a lot. So I'll have to try it out and see how it goes and see like, are people saying bundles? Are they saying lots? Like what's the language um, on that? BCBG generation extra small doesn't seem so extra small. Actually, I pulled it out because I thought maybe I would try it on. But BCBG does that. So I don't know. I, I will maybe try this on. Just really pretty, nice and pleated. Minted like the sleeveless blouses right now. I mean, again, we're getting into Florida summertime. So it's like 90 degrees. What are you? Here's another Caslon. Size medium, I thought this was nice, really soft, really soft, just a nice t-shirt dress type of thing with pockets down here, which is always great. So I don't think this was the same size as the other. Um, do a couple more and then see if there's anything else because again, I've got to keep an eye on the time. So Can Can, so funny story on this, not really funny, just a story. Um, and it has the tag still on here. So size one slash 24. Does it say in here? What kind of, oh, I don't know. It has a style number. So I'll just look that up. I don't know if they give them names, but I came across by complete accident of Poshmark Posher who was going out of business or whatever moving. And so I checked out her closet and she had some boutique items. She had uh, a top. She had a couple of dresses of the same style and white can can distressed jeans. And she was doing a five for 25 sale for all of her items, including boutique items. And so I said, Hey, I like six items. Can I do six for 30? And she said, yeah. And you know, I got six items for $30 plus shipping and she sent them all to me and they were in great shape. And the, literally the next day, the can can jeans sold. Did they sell on eBay? I think they sold on eBay. And so I think it's interesting because some people must just do Poshmark and then maybe they don't have success and they go out of business or they go out of business for some other reason or they're moving or whatever it is, but they've never sold it on eBay. So they never had the chance to make the sale on eBay because they were only on Poshmark. And then you're able to scoop up that inventory, cross post it somewhere else and boom, you've got a sale. So that actually was great. And so when I saw these in the box, I was like, yay. So, I don't know. I guess that wasn't really a funny story. Now was it? It was just a story. So, mental note for next time. Gap fit, size large. I'm not going to sell this. I may try this on and just keep it. I just don't know how I feel about this material. It's just that. We're at, like, if you ever get little things in your cuticles and it sticks to things, I hate that. Because I don't get a manicure because I weigh butts most of the day. So I'm not spending a whole lot on nails when I'm still wiping butts is how I look at it. Victoria's Secret, I'll sell this. Sports bra, 34C, that'll be nice. It'll go well. Another extra small, this is Champion, extra small. These are nice. Nice textured with the pockets for your cell phone and everything. So K 
Kenzie size four. I don't know. I've only sold a couple Kenzie things. I don't know. I probably will sell this to the consignment store slash get rid of it. I don't know that I'm, I don't know that I'll look it up. I'll look it up. I'll look it up. Sometimes I just make up an opinion about something and it's not really based on anything. Okay, this is another one I didn't know about. STS Blue, Piper Skinny, size 31. I don't know. I don't, I, I don't know. I have to look it up. But I will say everything in this Thread Up re Rescue Reject whatever box, um, I did not notice any flaws. Like I feel like everything was just stuff that didn't sell with them or they didn't take. So it's not of the great, you know, brands and everything, um, all of it anyway. Because, again, these are just the things that are good. And some of them that are good aren't even that good. <laughs> but these are the things that I'm keeping. I'm not even showing you the big <laughs> amount of, and I didn't count these, so I don't know what the total is of what I'm thinking I'm keeping. But the overwhelming majority is not going to be kept. Ann Taylor Aster Pencil Skirt. I've never found an Ann Taylor pencil skirt. I've never sold an Ann Taylor Aster pencil skirt. So I thought I would give it a try. I feel like everything I have is loft. And I don't have a lot of Ann Taylor. So because it's a pencil skirt and people like that kind of thing, um, I always loved pencil skirts. So we'll, we'll keep that. This is Fila Extra Small. It's going to go with I mean, I may end up having enough to where I could do two lots. We'll see how it ends up between leggings and tops. Um, maybe I'll do, because just because you're an extra small bottom doesn't mean you're an extra small top. So maybe I'll do extra small bottoms and then extra small tops. I don't know. We'll see. This is really cool. Dylan, Los Angeles, luxury, unique, casual, quality, happy clothes, live better, extra small, furry, like faux, leather or faux suede um, and furry on the inside zip up vest. Light, I thought the light was good, but it doesn't seem like it's that good. Um, so I don't know, but this looked good. And I feel like, you know, there's just some pieces that even if the brand isn't great, somebody's looking for that kind of thing. And so you could still sell it anyway. So I'm going to look up this and, and check it out, but it's pretty cool. Um, would I buy another box from thread up? So I bought a number of different rescue boxes and in general, and I've done a video on this on my like general opinion about thread up. So definitely if you're kind of never ordered from them or, or you just want to know more about thread up, I would definitely check out that video on the channel because it was a good overall, like reseller moms, Let's be real. Sometimes we just need stuff to show up at our door and it's worth going through the stuff that you're not going to actually take to find the things that you are going to take because it showed up at your door and there's a value to that. Um, so in general, I still feel like I will always be a patron of some kind of thread up for that reason for the rescue boxes. Um, I, I really feel though, now that this is the second one, 200 items of mixed brand, mixed clothes is too much of a variable for me to be happy walking away from it. There's just too much stuff shoved in there that is of no value whatsoever. And so it goes straight from somebody sent it from their junk closet at home. And then they said, okay, going in a rescue box. And that's that. So, I mean, there's old stuff, no name stuff, you know, Kohl's things, which is fine sometimes, but like, you know, your Kohl's, your Target, your whatever, I'm not doing as much of that online anymore um, just because of the way my particular setup is. So, so that doesn't mean that they're not good for someone. They're just not good for my business model right now because I've got to squeeze every last drop of profit out of every item that I can. I can't sell an item for $10 pay for a storage unit, pay for somebody to help me share items, pay for a photographer to photograph the item, pay for a virtual assistant to list the item, and then still like save some for me, save some for taxes, buy back. Like there's just no way that won't work. So I have to do a little bit of the stepping up of the ASP in order to continue to do well with my current situation. That doesn't mean it won't change later, but 
someone could probably get some sellable items out of here. And if you do have a way to arbitrage the other items that come in it that you don't want to put in your online store, but that you could sell at a garage sale or that you could take to a consignment store and still make some money from, then it is still a viable option. Um, so I think the 200 item box, no, 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 for me. The 50 item larger sizes works well still. Um, this particular time, they didn't have any plus sizes, but that's where I felt like I had the best was a 50 item thread up, mixed clothing, same size of plus size box. There you go. That was mouthful. Um, I have done well with the jeans, but I've never ordered a jeans box. I hate jeans to begin with, so never. Or I don't even think I want to try a jeans box because I just don't like dealing with jeans that, that much. Um, from the other unboxes I've seen, it seems the denim rescue boxes can be pretty good. Yep, and I've seen other people with that, so I perhaps, or maybe handbags. And I don't do a lot of handbags either. My operation, my storage unit, everything is set up for clothing, clothing that can go folded in one of these guys and put in the bins and the bags and, and stuff that I have set up. Anything that is oversized in some way um, or a handbag or shoes, I have no infrastructure for that right now. And so when I buy those things, one, I hate photographing them <laughs> and two, like, I just don't have a proper way to store them anymore. I have too much of the other to, you know, say, okay, this shelf is going to be for handbags and shoes or whatever. Like I just, I can't give up that real estate to do that. I don't know enough about shoes. I don't know enough about handbags and other oversized items to do that. I'm a clothing operation and I feel like, and I've posted on this about, in Instagram about it, like I need to stop just buying things that don't fit into that mold, at least for the time being, because every time I have them, they sit over here. Like I bought a belt and I bought a cosmetics bag from the bins. And now they're just going to sit and fester in a pile until I get so sick of looking at a pile of flat lay things that I have to do a flat lay day. And I hate flat lay day. I used to do flat lays all the time. But now that I have this hook and the lights and the whole setup is, is made for hanging things and folding them in a bag and shoving them in an Ikea bag that's what I can do at scale for me um, easily. And so everything else just like, like puts a monkey wrench in the whole operation for the day. So if that works for you and you're good at handbags, you have the infrastructure in place to put them and all that, then go for it. But for me, that just mucks me up for like a day and it makes me very upset. Um, game changer, LOL. How many listings do you currently carry? Oh, that was actually on my list. Um, so I have on Poshmark and eBay, basically the exact same. And on Mercari, I have less. Um, on Poshmark and eBay right now, it's about 1400, like low 1400. I was over 2000 for a few weeks a while back. And that's when I said, no more clearance is coming. And so I underwent a giant clearance and I clearanced out about 500 items, things that have sat for over a year or I should have never bought or I bought, but then I realized like that they had a flaw, but I listed them anyway. And so I should have never really listed them. Um, so just a number of like misfit children 500 misfit children. And I'm going to do a video on the clearance and the whole process of how I decided what would go into the clearance, how I did the clearance, the multiple steps, how long it took, like everything. It just takes a lot of time because I'm still going through some of it to put all those thoughts and steps together. Um, so it's coming. Stay tuned. If you have specific questions, let me know. But so that took me down to about 1300 and now I'm kind of inching back up. I mean, I sell anywhere from most days, 12 to 18, um, on a regular day, not a weekend, you know, on a Monday kind of thing. So I would say my average is still 10 to 12 solid. There's some days where I'll have like eight or six, but most days I'm at selling at about 10 to 12, most days, though, now I'm kind of creeping back up into 12 to 18. So I definitely want to be putting up 10 and 20 listings a day if I can to kind of stay in a certain area. But at the same time, 
I feel like a big secret to what I need to do right now to improve my overall store profitability, operations, just everything is put more systems into place to regularly, and I call it wrap my arms around all my items. When I used to work, I used to say touching all my papers, like I need to see what's going on with everything. There's so many and they get listed for so long sometimes if they don't sell right away that you forget what you have, you forget why you bought it, why you listed it, why it was at that price. Maybe it had a flaw and you forgot it had a flaw. And so you had it at this price, but really it should be at a lower price because that's a flaw or whatever. And so maybe you're rechecking comps and you're like, oh, that price I put up was cockamamie stupid. So like you just need to like sit there and like look at all your stuff and like see where it's at and decide how to strategically do more things with it. And I feel like I never have time to do that. And so that's why I feel like if I could get down to like a thousand items, 1200 items where it's smaller and I can really on a couple of weeks basis, churn through all of my listings and really be strategic and proactive about what I'm doing with these items. Then I could build it up from there once the systems are in place. But right now I have no systems for that. And there's just too many to really manage in a good way. And one thing I've been doing, though, now that I think about it, I completely forgot to do it today, was I found an app where you can track your time, which is probably bad news, but it's like a time, like a time card app. And you can just click in, clock in, click in, clock out. You can add a break. You can en enter a manual entry. And I'm like, I want to track my time. Like, How much am I really spending on reselling, on working, on various things? And then I can start to identify objectively, what are my time sucks? What am I spending time on too much? What am I spending my time on too little? And how can I repurpose and refocus? Because even though I stay home with Geo, I do get a lot of time to work on my business because I get my happy ass up at four in the morning. <laughs> so I don't want to do that forever. It is exhausting. <laughs> like I don't mind doing it. I'm happy to do it for my business because it makes me feel good to move my business forward. But I'm tired. <laughs> like, I don't want to be up at four in the morning all the time. So when I get, you know, when Gio's in school part of the time, um, he does three days, half days. When my husband takes him, usually on like a Thursday, I get to go and have kind of like a full day to do whatever I want. Um, I don't always want to spend it, you know, trying to get as much as I possibly can done because that's my only kid free time. Like I'd like for it to be a little bit more free <laughs> and, you know, where I can have a more relaxing time instead of rushing to cram in everything I can during my kid free time. Or, you know, instead of having him play independently and me doing work when he is home, which I don't do a lot, but I do do sometimes. And part of it is because I do want him to learn to independently play. And part of it is because I feel pressured to get things done. Um, and I've become a master at like, what do I have to do kid free? What can I do when he's around? What should I do when he's sleeping? Because it's this kind of thing versus like I, his room is right there. So I can't do this kind of stuff when he's sleeping. So like it's exhausting to try to Tetris my way through all of these tasks. And so I, I'm looking forward to when I have more kid free time and he's in more, more school. So I have more time. I fantasize when he goes to kindergarten, I have five full days to work, but at the same time, I don't also just want to fill that time up with taking more photos when I have someone that can help me with that and I can make more money exponentially by taking those those hours and revising my listings or finding out more liquidation options or whatever and really working on the business is not in the business. So I'm sorry I'm like doing this whole giant rant. It's just I've been really thinking about it lately. It's really on my mind. And so, you know, I it's hard to know what is the right thing. So all you can do is just keep trying stuff and eventually one of it will work out. It'll slow your growth. I've been doing this for three years and I've tried every inventory system and I've tried every photo taking system and I've tried all of these things to figure out what's the best. And as I finally lock in a piece there's three other pieces over here that I need to lock in too. Um, but when I get all those pieces locked in, it's going to be awesome because I'll be there for him when he 
needs me to take him to whatever sports practice or music practice or whatever thing he's doing. And when it's time to be class mom and go on field trips, like I'm trying to front load all of this work so that I can be there for him when it really counts. Cause right now let's face it. He's three and a half. He's not going to remember anything that's going on. <laughs> like that's how I'm going. I don't remember anything from when I was three and a half. So he's probably not either. So everything right now is just kind of bonus. And you know, when he's like five and we'll actually remember that stuff when he's 25, I want to make sure that he's not like, mom, you never play trains with me. You were always farting around with other people's used clothes. Like that would be the worst. So <laughs> I don't want to do that. All right. Let's see. Um, that's good. Sounds like you have a plan. Yeah. I have 5 million plans. That's the problem. I have 500 million plans. Ugh. Jones, New York, one size faux fur trim cape black. It's Jones, New York, but people like these things. People like these cape things. So it's a shame that I have it now approaching June for God's sake, but and it's going to be bulky and we're going to have to sit on it for a little while. I'll do a couple more items and I got to go because it's uh, just hitting an hour. So, but I want to, I want to give you the show you came for H by Bordeaux. I don't know, but it's just a nice, very soft gray sweatshirt with a zipper in the back and it's a size extra small. This is uh, Old Navy, I think, extra small leggings. These were, here's all the pile that it was. Reebok extra small leggings. So again, these are gonna go in the extra small. So Garnet Hill, I'm pretty sure that's something, um, it's just a basic long sleeve shirt. So I don't know, I'm gonna look up and just see if it's something enough that a basic long sleeve V-neck shirt will go for anything decent. Um, if not, I'll give it to the consignment store, but I did, I put this in here so that it would make me look up Garnet Hill because I feel like when I see people post labels, that's one of the labels that I've seen. And for those that are following me on Instagram, I'm going to start curating more content because it's hard for me to put up a lot of my own. But I feel like I don't spend enough time researching things that other people are doing that would be share worthy. So I found the repost app. And like when I see somebody that puts up a lot of like nice labels, I'm going to repost it so that anyone who's following me also can find out about this other person in case they didn't know about them. And also we'll see it on my feed as well. And it helps me do research by seeing these labels. And then I'll at the same time share it with you. So when I see like cleaning tips, good supplies, labels, you know, Bolo brands, I'm going to start doing some more of that because I feel like when I do it for you, it makes me do it for myself. Otherwise, it doesn't get done. So it'll be good. Um, I think I might just keep this for myself. Um, this is just like a sleeveless tank. Like I said, sleeveless little colored blouse. Don't know if this is something it's in here to research. Jack, size 8, faux leather, definitely polyurethane. <laughs> um, faux leather, vegan leather, zipper, moto skirt with pockets. Oh, and chapstick. Gross. Let's see, you got any money in here? No, bummer. Most money you've ever found at the bins or in a pocket of a thrifted item, put it in the chat. If there's anybody still here, we've got four people here. Have you ever found any money? The most I have found is $20 at one time, but I found it a few times now. So I think I'm up to like 60 or $80, um, which I love. Driftwood, here's the other one. Did anybody know about that? I don't think anybody posted about that. I have to look it up. Driftwood. If you're watching the replay, put it in the comments. Comments are good for the Reseller Mom Show. Thank you in advance. Here's the other LuLaRoe. Shirley Kimono. Thanks to, was it uh, Thrift Flip? Can I do this? Yes, I can. Thrift to flip. Sorry, I knew it was something like that. I wanted to say it. And thank you. I, you've been very active in the Reseller Mom Show community, and I appreciate it. So this is nice. Habitual. This was another jean brand. See, I don't do a lot of jeans. So that's why I don't know any of this stuff. Habitual New York, Los Angeles, size 25 Gina boot. Pockets are kind of cool, like this cross. 
like a European brand. And I thought this was interesting. I wouldn't normally just keep a Nike t-shirt and I don't know. It says made in the USA. I don't know if they still are. I don't know if this is vintage, but I thought it was worth looking up. It was just a cool random like abstract print type of thing. So I just thought, you know, with all this athletic wear that people just want cool and different stuff, maybe this would be something. So we'll see. I don't know. So that is everything from the box. I got three of those. So when you order a 200 item, it comes in three or four, depending, I guess, on how bulky the items are. So um, I think the last one that I got, it was four boxes and this one was three boxes. So I did get one other one that was a 50 item. So I may or may not do a unboxing of that. We'll see. I've got another one coming. I've got a Quick Lots mystery apparel box coming. I have um, five liquidation auctions, liquidation.com auctions that I've won. Those are coming. I'm going to do unboxings of all of it. So I don't know if they're all going to be live. Um, and then just another note on live situations. I Geo is not going to be in school three days a week over the summer. He's going to be in school two days a week over the summer. And so probably I want to have a weekly live. I want to get in the habit of it. I want to schedule it. I want people to know when it is and that it's relatively consistent. So thus far, the two that I did were Wednesdays, but I think what'll end up happening is that this will go to Monday. So if anyone has any time preferences, <laughs> you know, let me know. I mean, I don't know that I can do it, but it, it, I'm just curious, like what people, I don't know where all, you all are. I don't know what time zone you're in um, or what people's general schedule is. So I'm just curious, like if you could pick what time I would do a live and you wanted to come back again and join me on a live, what time would you like? Um, that would be nice to know. So I am like out of breath need to drink some water and need to go get my son from school. So I wish you all happy, happy sales. I hope you have a great Memorial Day weekend. Don't work too hard and just leave me any additional questions or comments in the comments. If you're watching this on the replay, I answer them all. I love to hear from you. It really is helpful and exciting and I enjoy it. So um, just you know, keep connecting with me on Instagram or here and I need to stop talking now. Thanks so much. Bye. Yes, I'm sure.